Happy Friday, everybody. Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. It is a Twinkle Tip Friday video time, and we welcome you. We hope that you've had a wonderful week. We hope that you're excited to have a wonderful weekend, and that maybe you're ready to learn something new or something to carry you along in the X-Lights hobby and to learn more. Today's video is going to focus on getting started with a sequence, and it was actually supposed to be recorded last week. Let's roll the intro and we'll get right into it. Thank you for joining us this week, Clyde here, and it is wonderful to have you again. So one of the things that I wanted to do last week was do this video. And the reason that I didn't do this video is because I recorded it three different times and I actually came up with three different topics um, and that made it quite concerning because the lesson that I wanted to share with you is some of the basics that you want to know whenever you begin sequencing and one of those basics was the frames per second well that was quite complicated and well I never ever addressed the situation until last week's video so that leads me into today's video but another thing too and I'm gonna point this out now the other part of the uh, lesson that we aren't going to touch on in detail is the display elements. And I have another video on that. Uh, however, uh, it, it, it's a little longer. We did it as a webinar. And you can follow that video up here later on. So let's go ahead and get right into it. The first thing I want to share with you is the, the song that we're going to use today because we actually do need an MP3. Now, uh, I found this MP3. It's called uh, Rocket by Coma Media, and it is on uh, pixabay.com. I'll put the link in the video description, and we're going to use that as our demo song today. So let's go ahead and get into it with the MP3. So uh, we have our layout. This is our pro layout here, and I want to get started with creating a new sequence. Now there's this new sequence icon, and this icon is going to be important because it has a wizard attached to it. And when we when we start a new sequence, we use that button there and we click on musical sequence. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to find the MP3. There's the MP3, and I'm going to go ahead and click open. Now if you watched last week's video, you'll know which choice that you want to select I'm going to select 20 frames per second and if you want to learn more about frames per second that video really dives into it so let's go ahead and click the uh, done button here because basically we're done you, you can there's more information in here you can fill in all right so the first thing that we are going to do now that our sequence is fully created we have the waveform in there and you can see we have a list of sequencing items over on the right hand side of the screen there and what you want to consider is the level or the order at which all of those models are listed over there on the right side of the screen. Now, this is a rather arbitrary uh, method for setting up your sequences. Generally, generally, the x -Lights development team for years suggested putting your groups at the top all of your groups at the top and ordering them with your most largest groups or like your whole house or maybe your all yard or your all display or everything that is large with uh, lots of little models into it put those at the top and there is a hierarchy at which sequences or effects are rendered now I don't want to get too deep into this this is a whole nother video in fact if you look above I have a video that we did on the display elements uh, section and uh, just suffice to say that what we need to do is we need to create a view so that all of our groups and models are in an order that we can easily find them and that way when we apply effects to them x slice knows the order at which to render those effects whenever they're combined with other things on the list so uh, we're going to go into the display elements box and this is the master view they call it but I created another view where I put my larger groups at the top my all display all house all yard and then I put all of my regular groups down underneath of it and then any of my other uh, some model my submodel groups are usually down below and then I have my uh, matrix and my mega tree anything that's not in a group I put those way down at the bottom and I sequence those individually there's no rules to doing it this way uh, but if you are consistent with yourself and after you understand and you learn and again watch the video uh, you'll understand why we we've taken this approach I'm gonna go ahead and click on what we've named the new master and I'm gonna click the make master so now if I go ahead and I click on the master view or I've, over here's the drop-down 
uh, you'll see that the the old the default from X lights has been replaced with what my default is, what I like to use every time I sequence. This is a rather important point because you're going to spend, you know, 20, 30 hours in a sequence. You want everything organized so it's easy for you to find. The next thing we're going to get into is timing marks. So X Lights gives us a timing mark right out of the gate. It doesn't actually not a timing mark, timing track rather. And they give us this timing track so that we can begin to lay down different timing points. So what you can do is click up here in the waveform and you can click anywhere you like. And if you hit on your keyboard, the lowercase letter T, doesn't matter where, you can add a timing mark whenever you have, a, have the radio box selected beside a timing track. So one of the first things that I will do is I will sit down at the beginning of a song and I will listen to the song and I'll hear the different parts and I start chunking the song down so that I'm not looking at this whole one waveform that's right here. I'm actually looking at smaller sections of the waveform and I'm only working within that little area, maybe that little box, if you will. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Now, before I begin that, one of the things that you can visually do is you can visually look here at the sequence and you can tell the difference whenever these waveforms are really, really high up uh, on the upper ends, uh, like really filled in and bold. Uh, what that means is that the sound's really loud there, but if you're zoomed back here, I just, I'm hitting the plus and minus keys on my keyboard. Uh, it, the further back you are, you can see where these separations are. So you can take this timing track uh, timing mark, excuse me, and move it to kind of where that loudness starts and stops. And that may be useful to you. This is just kind of a basic outline. So here's the big ones. I'm just putting some timing tracks. And now, now what I've done is I've got a, I've got a section or a block here that I can work within and I can start sequencing within. Now, if I look at this, if I click and drag, this is about 15 seconds long. This here, oh, this is about 30 seconds long. How long is this one here? This one's 14 or 15 seconds long as well. And then probably, let's see here, another 30 seconds as well. So this is a minute and 30 seconds long plus maybe a minute and 40. Now, the next thing that you probably want to do is you want to kind of listen to each section and get a feel for them. That's important. So I'm not going to, if I sit and play this, you should be able to hear it. Um, if I sit and play this MP3, you can hear the sections that sound similar. What I like to do is I like to listen to the song and find where the song separates itself from one part to the next. And you'll hear it here in a second. Um, it looks like there are only 15 second intervals in this song, but not all songs are built the same. So right here, it, it about sounds like it starts over again. If I hit the letter T right there, that tells, that chunks it down again. And then if you double click on the connected line, two things could happen. One, it could play just like I did. I, I'll, I just push the pay, space bar to stop it. If you double click on the timing mark, sometimes it will play just like it is. Or it may, if you double click on the timing line, it may enter, an, it may open up the label dialog. And what this allows you to do is this allows you to type something like whatever. Now, where does this come from? This is a setting in our preferences. If we go over here to preferences and we click on our effects grid, uh, we have this option here. It says double click mode. Now, what does that mean? Whenever I'm on this timing line, you can double click and it will either do one of two things. It will either double click and it will play the timing, which is what we just did. Or you can have it, whenever you double click, you can uh, edit the text. So the next thing I wanna share with you is timing marks that are auto-generated. You could, you could right click here, select add timing mark. And if you do, you can add an empty timing mark and you can give it a name. We could call this, uh, beats demo and what you could do is you could sit here manually and you can create your own timing marks if you listen to the music and as you can already see this is rather tedious you'd have to hit right on the beat and then whenever you go back and play it 
what happens is you might find you miss the beat and you actually have to do some adjusting to hit it right on with that beat where you, you got it close, but it didn't actually work. So this manual way to create a timing track is a little bit antiquated at the moment because there is functions in X-Lights that have been added and a tool that you want to go download now. And I'm going to go up to the X-Lights website page. So here on the X-Lights download page, this is uh, if you go to xlights.org and you click on the download page, and from here you see this item called Queen Mary Vamp Plugins. You want to click this, download this, and install this, but you must have X-Lights closed or it's not going to do anything until after you reopen your X-Lights instance. So that's rather important. Close X-Lights, download that, install the Queen Mary Vamp Plugins, and this is the kind of thing that you're now going to have access to whenever you select right click add timings now if you don't have it X lights will prompt you it'll have a drop down here in the drop down it'll say would you like to download a Queen Mary Vamp plugin then take the option there but once you do once you install it once you close X lights and open X lights up again what you'll what you'll have here is you'll notice that this screens a little bit wider now and then you'll also have a significant number of choices and selections for you to go crazy with to help you add timing marks that are significant for your sequencing so uh, I, I don't want to get too much involved in this I'm going to share with you the top two or three that I like to use and number one is bar and beat tracker bars and bar and beat tracker beats I put every single sequence that I use through these two uh, selected timings. So with the beat, there's a lot of settings over here. And so generally what I like to do is I like to just leave it as the default. And as you can see, I'm going to I'm going to deselect these timing marks here. And as you can see, X lights has built or Queen Mary Vamp plugin has built a timing mark on what it's sir it's gone through and read the timing track and it's created this beat track for you so if we zoom in a little bit just hitting the plus key or you can double click on the waveform or you can hit the plus or minus keys up here or the icons up here that zooms you in and out in your sequence but you now can um you now can go through and see how it's hitting the beat of every single one of those beats there now this is rather nice because I just saved myself all the time of manually hitting the lowercase letter T now if we zoom out and uh, again it looks like I hit timing marks on this up here uh, this is your chunk this is like a big chunk of the sequence right this is a big chunk of the sequence and this is a big chunk of the sequence keep in mind that this is this is one way for you to take your timings and be able to zoom in and work in a smaller area so uh, if we click and drag out here we can select a certain number of timing marks and then we can sequence within those but it's always part of the larger group so it kind of keeps you focused and generalized in one little area now the the next timing we'll go ahead and add this in add a timing track and I like to do the uh, bars beat bar and beat tracker bars and I like to leave this uh, this is the this is the basic setting this is the one that I do change though um, there's usually in 4-4 timing I don't want to get into music theory uh, but 4-4 timing is a four beat generally what you listen to in pop music or what in most Christmas songs uh, and so forth but the the thing that is general about bars is a bar is a group of uh, whatever the timing is and in this case it's 4-4 four, four timing so if you have four beats that's one bar I like to put one bar as eight beats so uh, what does that mean well I just slide this little slider over here and I click OK and this chunks down if we zoom in this group here see how it says one two three four five six seven eight that's four that's eight beats and that's two bars and but it gives me a bigger chunk to work off of instead of having to work at the really tiny or more monotonous uh, uh, timing marks so th these are both helpful I use these in absolutely every one of my sequences um, I do create a a, uh, a blank timing uh, I usually use the new timing is is kind of my setup um, 
uh, my setup, you know, chunk, uh, you know, overhead view of my entire sequence. And then I have another blank or a dummy one here. We'll go ahead. You can delete timing tracks, right click, delete timing track. But if I wanted to add the other timing track that is useful for me, I would I would add an empty track and I would call it hits. And the reason that I call it hits is typically because whenever I begin sequencing and I, I feel like there's certain marks in the song where I, I gotta nail that beat or this is a really important part, I just go listen to the song and whenever I hear it, like right here, See right there, I might want to sequence something here, or I want to, might want to leave it blank, or I might want to do something, but the timing mark is an indicator to me also that I want to do something inside the sequence that at that point in time. Now, do I use this on every single sequence? Sometimes I do. Uh, sometimes I heavily sequence to it, and sometimes I don't. It's there just as a reminder, hey, there's some things here that I should pay attention to. Well, guys, I hope this gave you a good introduction to where you can start getting rolling with your sequences. I know that uh, there is a lot of questions that some of you might have whenever it concerns how you get started and where to begin with. But whenever you sequence, it's not always uh, relatively easy to sequence a whole song. I chose something here that's a minute and 30 seconds or so, but your song might be six minutes long. And if you take the time to chunk down that six minute song, you can break it down and you can sequence that song. It's going to take you some time because there's a lot of pieces to it. But at the same token, you're going to learn that if you have the beat tracks set up, if you have the bars added in, if you have uh, your timings, your, your hit track set up, then you're going to find that you can breeze through sections a little bit more quickly. And some of the tools that are built into x Lights are really there to help you be a little bit more productive and aid you as you're getting going. Well, guys, I hope this video was helpful and informative. If you liked the video, please give us a huge thumbs up. If you haven't done yet, so please hit the subscribe button down below. And don't forget to hit the bell for notifications. It always is appreciated that you guys do that because it really helps push the video out there and help other people who are challenged with learning about x lights and if you appreciate the things that we do here at pixel pro displays and helping people get their shows running helping you understand things in x lights or learning more about the hobby consider becoming a ppd sequence club member where you get one awesome sequence each and every month and today is no exception it's march it's the beginning of march and we have three songs on the website ready and available for you to go pick and download from the annual or monthly PPD Club Sequence membership. Guys, thanks for joining us. This is Clyde Lindsay here signing out. We will see you in the next video. Take care and bye for now. Hey, where did where'd the regular music go? Wait, what's that? Oh yeah.